Good evening, good afternoon. My name is Douglas Martin, I'm from Morgan Stanley. Welcome to your Monday mindfulness session with Mindful on Wall Street. Uh, today, we are gonna be talking about emotional intelligence and mindfulness, how those two things work together and can foster a sense of uh, focus in the workplace, but also good relations, good relations with ourselves, good relations with our teammates, our clients, our colleagues, our management, and our um, and our subordinates, our teams. So, as we arrive here, as we do, this is a sort of another Zoom meeting, probably in a long line of Zoom meetings for the day. But we are being a bit more purposeful in this session. So, we want to take a moment, as we do just about every week, is a moment to arrive. So, we're just going to start with that sense of arrival. And that just means that you actually put your mind and your body in the same place and maybe do some slight physical cues to engage yourselves, immerse and kind of immerse into this moment, right? So we're first just making a commitment to be present, to actually be here, where our mind, our mind and our body in the same place. And that might be doing things like taking our phone, and putting it face down so that it's sort of not a distraction device. And it might be closing some team chats or those kind of instant messaging going around or our work notebook or our um, laptops and computers and that kind of thing. And just focusing on whatever screen we're using to engage in this particular session. So try to single screen, single focus for the next 28 minutes or so. And then actually just taking a look around the room that you're in right that you find yourselves in like i'm here right we're here in the zoom we're also here in a physical space i'm at 1633 broadway in midtown manhattan i'm in this touchdown room and i can feel my feet on the floor i can notice the lights in this room right take a moment to notice where you are and put your mind in your body in that same place And yeah, we can go ahead and take a nice deep breath to kind of help anchor ourselves in this spot. And again, we're not doing anything mystical here. This is not mindfulness. This is just actually being present, right? And which is something that we ideally are throughout our day. But sometimes we can get caught up in the busyness of the day and sort of be spinning in our head or feel like we're sort of operating as 10 fingers and a brain and not actually fully embodied. It's one of the contradictions in some way that we talk about mindfulness but it's just amount just as much about bodyfulness so again our topic for today is going to be emotional intelligence and mindfulness we're going to talk a little bit about what that is what emotional intelligence is how mindfulness can support us a little background on what mindfulness is as well um, and then do some mindfulness practice before we close with um, some questions and then close for for the day. Uh, just a quick reminder, these mindfulness, mindful and Wall Street sessions are going to continue every Monday for the next at least one week. There may be two more uh, before the end of the year, and then we'll kick off again in January, same time uh, on Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern. So hope that everyone's uh, doing well and staying pace and staying balanced in the uh what has become the real busyness of the year end right i think everyone can feel that i'm certainly feeling it my my colleagues are feeling like we just we got to get sort of got every get everything in before the end of the year if those are deals or task lists or projects but there's just so few time left and that can kind of raise our anxiety and raise our busyness and yet at the same time what we know we need to do is sort of focus on one thing at a time and give our full attention to that and that allows us to close out those things and even just get clarity on really what the most important things are that we have to do um, with the limited time that we have. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Let's see if we can do this. I appreciate if anyone can give me sort of a validation that they can see my screen that would be helpful great um so we're taking that moment to arrive i'm actually going to skip over this and just go right into um what emotional intelligence is 
right? We don't have to read the full definition here, but it gives a sense of what are we talking about around this, this term? It's been around since the late 80s, at least. Um, it's something that continually talks is discussed in the workplace, especially around near end when year end reviews are happening. Sometimes we actually use the term EI or EQ. Other times it just comes out uh, as we're doing reviews with our colleagues, with our um, with our with the people that we manage, or by our management around really how it comes off and is how we engage with others. How do we sell our ideas? How do we deal with conflict? How do we communicate effectively? How do we persuade and influence people to our point of view? That comes through EI or EQ, the ability to manage our emotions, understand the emotions of those around us, right? And has these elements of self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, social skills, right? Those that have high EQ can understand what's happening in themselves and can what uh, they can understand and tune in to what's happening um, and those around them, right? They have that ability to quote unquote, read the room, really understand what's going on and then change and pivot. And you, so you're going down one road and you, you know you're not making progress that people have shut down, they're not interested, they hooked up their phone, they're starting to multitask and you stop, pause, notice that, notice that anxiety or intention in yourself and can work with that situation. That's really the idea of having a high EQ or EI. And then quickly, how does mindfulness support this idea of uh, emotional intelligence, EQ or EI, right? Well, one thing is, of course, that med meditation and mindfulness improves our ability to reduce our stress and improve our well-being for ourselves, that we can regulate the emotions that are happening because we know what's happening. We know what's happening in our mind. We know what's happening in our body. We know what's happening in our head in the sense of that, that narration, that that we're all we all have with ourselves all day long we've actually developed a relationship with that narrator right number two that meditation can increase our self-awareness and self-regulation so we're more aware again of what's going on it's the real foundation of emotional intelligence is awareness so we can recognize and understand what's happening in ourselves um our strengths our weaknesses and our ability to manage those impulses right when we start to go into habitual patterns around defensiveness or aggressiveness or, or um, being, uh, having self-doubt, right? We can uh, recognize, be aware of those patterns and step out of them and actually just step into engaging with those that we're with. Number three, meditation can help us with cultivating these uh, ideas of non-judgmental and present focused attention, right? One of the cores of mindfulness is this idea of being present and non-judgmental, -judgment, that we can actually be in the moment and just be with it in our practice, in the sort of the laboratory or the gym of practicing meditation. And that allows us to then go out there and practice it in the workplace and engage with people and not be judging ourselves moment to moment, but be with, be with them. We be with those persons that we're engaging with and with a sense of kindness, and curiosity, and empathy. And again, that's the sort of the last idea here is that meditation can improve our adaptability in reality testing, that ability to cope with uncertainty, the in uncertainty that's inevitable with life. Uh, we don't know if that deal will close next week. We don't necessarily sure if we're going to hit that project milestone or not. It's a sense of that meditation can help with the ups and downs, the pushes and pulls of life, um, no matter what life throws at us. The idea here is that we can try to control everything. The analogy there is to sort of pave over the world with leather, right? If we think about us having uh, walking the earth barefoot and we have very tender, we haven't developed course, you know, a calluses on the bottom of our feet. So as we walk around the earth barefoot, things are sharp and they're, uh, they're jagged and it can feel painful and we feel very sensitive to that. And that's the, the analogy. And, the, and, and we can do two things about that. We can either try to cover the earth with soft leather, right? Which seems physically impossible. Or we can work with our minds and uh, develop a kind of a greater resilience to dealing with the ups and downs of our minds. And then we can deal with those sharp edges. In other words, we can put on a pair of sandals. And so that's the analogy. It's instead of trying to control everything uh, out there as best as we can, and we obviously want it, 
influence things in the way that we see best, but ultimately what we can control is ourselves. So we can control the emotions and the ways that we deal with the ups and downs that are inevitable with life. Uh, the working definitions of mindfulness and meditation, right? Mindfulness is the ability to pay attention in a particular way in the present moment, not judgmentally. And it's also this idea of these collection of skills of concentration, sense, clarity, and equanimity, right? That we can focus on something, we're clear about when we're focusing on it, we notice when our mind gets distracted. We also have a sense of clarity of what's happening in our minds and bodies. And the equanimity, again, is that idea of being able to be balanced even when life is not so balanced. And meditation is the training ground for mindfulness. It is the place where we practice it. We take time out. We do the biceps curl for our brain and actually practice in a uh, calmer and quieter environment to train ourselves so that we can deal uh, with life out there. Really, the goal is mindfulness, right? The goal is not meditation. Meditation is just training to be mindful in the rest of our lives. And so we're going to practice now. Let's do some practice together. And uh, how we do that practice is uh, pretty simple. Oops, sorry about that. Is that we're going to pay attention to something. It might be breathing. We're actually going to go through a couple of different points of focus. Our minds will then inevitably get distracted. So that's the distraction. And then we have the ability. We all have this natural ability to notice when our mind has drifted. And we our meta attention brings ourselves back. And we bring ourselves back with an attitude of caring, curiosity, nudge, nudge, judgmental uh, self, um, being not, not judgmental, and that, uh, that sense of kindness, and that brings us back to the attention. We just do this over and over and over again. And that is, again, the, the training ground for developing uh, that focus, sense clarity, and economy. So let's do some practice together. Stop this. I think I stopped the Zoom. Good. And let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to take an upright yet relaxed posture. And just sit here for a second with your eyes open. We're not doing, again, this is still pre-meditation, pre-mindfulness. We're just putting our feet on our floor, feet on the floor, upright yet relaxed posture, just getting a sense of ourselves in space, sort of looking straight out. And just to bring ourselves again grounded into the present moment, we can take a nice deep breath together. So inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. We're still not officially, officially meditating, although we sort of are, right? We're in an intentional upright yet relaxed posture we're noticing our breath we notice our ourselves sitting in a chair in the space in the room that we're in right so our mind and our body are mostly in the same place and now as i said on that shown in that slide this sense of focus right our mind needs a place to land it needs a place to rest if you will you need some object of focus there are some open awareness practices but uh by and large there is some kind of object of focus and so we're going to start with sound we've done this recently a couple times but i find it helpful especially at the end of a busy monday to just start with something real basic for sort of easy to pick up on and so what do I mean by this? this? means that at this point, you can keep your eyes open or closed. doesn't matter. Our hands sort of just in our lap. And we're just tuning into sound. We're putting all of our mind's attention, our whole focus on sound. So the sound of my voice. You're trying to pick up all the different overlapping sounds that you hear in your environment as a way of really anchoring into the present moment. Noticing the sound of my voice, the sound of an air conditioner or a heater, 
sound of other people in your office or in your home, sound of traffic outside, whatever sounds are arising and passing away. And we're using this idea, this sort of um, point of view, if you will, of non-judgment, right? These sounds are not for us or against us. They're not friends or enemies. They're just sounds that are arising and then passing away. The attitude is one of like, ah, oh, very interesting. I didn't notice that sound before. That's the type of attitude that we're having here. And just noticing all the different sounds that are arising and passing away. Notice that we don't have to actually make a great deal of effort to notice sounds. They sort of just, they just come at us. They just appear. And as quickly they pass. And then new sounds appear. our way of marking time here in the session is like where's the now the now is where the sounds are Right, how many different things can we notice? How many different sounds can we notice in our environment? It starts to get quite subtle. And even include the ringing in our own ears. Allowing ourselves to be wide open to sound. And probably by now, the mind has started to travel, right? The mind started to travel through time by going backwards in time and reminiscing about what happened earlier this afternoon or this morning or yesterday or the weekend or forward into what's going to happen this evening, tomorrow, next week. And so we're trying to stay right here. And each time we hear a sound, we detect a sound, it's like, ah, that's now. That sound is happening now. And then our mind can travel through space, right? It can travel from the office that we're in or our home office to a friend's house or to a restaurant or on vacation, or it wants to be somewhere, maybe somewhere more interesting and entertaining than just sitting here. 
or it starts to go through our to-do list. And each time we're saying, nope, no, this is my time to train in being present so that I can develop and increase my emotional intelligence and well-being. And actually, there's nothing wrong with just sitting here. This is the training. We're learning to stay, as Pema Chodron says. Another one of my teachers will say, he used to say, Many years ago, he'd say, don't just do something, sit there. Flipping the conventional phrase on its head, meaning that it's easy to stay busy. It takes a tremendous amount of courage and strength and patience to just slow down and be awake, be present, be in the now. And again, this thing has benefit onto itself. It has benefit to us physically in a sense of it's fostering, uh, regulates our blood pressure, immune system, our digestion. So this goes on and on about the medical benefits, but there's also these emotional intelligence benefits that allows us to be really, like, really with ourselves. Right? We don't have to be scrolling when there's a moment of uh, lack of entertainment, we can simply just sit with ourselves and then notice what's going on around us. Like the sound. What sounds are we hearing now? For the last few minutes, we'll change the object of focus to probably the most popular, I think, object of focus, which is the breath. So again, basic idea, we found an object of focus that's, that was sound, now we're gonna shift that to breathing, the physical action of breathing. The body does this all day, every day, and now we're just gonna pay attention to it. So we actually get really clear in our head, in our minds, like we would if we we're trying to clarify an argument, we get really clear and precise about when our body is breathing in and when our body is breathing out. And we can feel, we can detect the sense of breath, the movement, the wind. Try to find exactly where you feel the breath. Is it in the chest? Is it in the throat? Is it in the lips? Is it in the belly? Where are you feeling the breath right now? Can you get precise about how that is, how that feels? Not imagining how it feels, but actually feeling it. Optional adjustment here is to actually label it in and out as we breathe in. And then there's a gap and then we breathe out. Feel free to label that or to stay label-less.
final minute of practice here. Staying with the breath. Finding that sense of balance and rhythm with our breathing. We can also include our posture and our sense of body awareness. And also fold in sound if you like. We're fully present. Okay, we can raise our gaze and open our eyes if we had them closed. Um, we've got just a few minutes. And I want to, uh, while this is in webinar format, we can't have folks on screen. Would love to get a couple of comments or questions through the Q and A box. So, um, would love to hear from a few folks just about either how it's going today in general, how was that session for you? Um, or any particular questions on the practice or on the concepts of emotional intelligence and how that applies into the workplace and being mindful on Wall Street. All right, thank you, Julie. So just a comment, look forward to this every Monday. It helps me take time to, uh, during other days to stop and meditate. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a big part of it is just sort of doing the practice, right? Showing up. Uh, I look forward to these times as well. I keep it in my calendar, sort of the, the time blocked. And, um, you know, it's about uh, seeing, you know, seeing the progress over time by sort of logging the time where you need to sort of need to put in the time, whether that's, you know, program, learning how to program or practice the piano or practicing a sport. It's all those things, you know, you're going to need to kind of put in the training and then there's no mystery about it. There's no like sort of hope or magical things. If you would have kind of train on being present, your mind will learn how to be more present. There's no sort of uh hope or mysticism about it you can sort of put in that time so regularly scheduling the mindfulness practice into your busy days is a way of building that habit you know she's also saying about seeing you all at rockefeller university um and Oka, Oka is also saying definitely hard not to keep busy for folks like us um doing 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 with a calm mind is hard yeah it's difficult right because we are uh, by our very nature of being at large financial service companies um tasked with a lot of responsibilities expected to deliver on a lot especially this time of year and that means it seems to be hard to slow down and yet we know that that training taking time out to sharpen the saw as stephen covey used to say is the very well to a uh, very way to get precision and to know what to focus on um instead of just uh, doing, doing, doing. We have to decide actually where are we're going to direct our attention. Um, and uh, thanks for reminding us that doing nothing with the mind is important. Yeah, it is a sort of nothing. It's also so, quite something to be training in this way. It's both at the same time, one of those mindfulness mysteries or mindfulness uh, seeming contradictions. All right. Well, we'll leave it here for this week. Again, we have at least one more Mindful and Wall Street session uh, scheduled for next week, December 11th. Thank you so much for joining today. Look forward to seeing you next week. And again, we will continue these sessions uh, in January of 2024 as well. If you have any uh, questions, comments, suggestions, please send them our way. We read them all and we really take those to heart. So hello at mindfulandwallstreet.org is the email address. And we uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. And thanks so much for tuning today. Have a good evening.